have been flooded a long time ago. So there had to be something really, really putrid in the nostrils of God. And I think the mixing of the angels with the mixing of human flesh without God anywhere in it produces a kind of evil we can't even imagine. So, if we go on to read the Bible in the scripture, it tells us that these men were considered men of renown. In other words, stories were told about them. They were considered great men like the Titans. All of yeah. those type people. Well, it just so happens that when the apostles were talking to Jesus about their sign, what, how will we know when the sign, when the time is the time for you, Lord, the end time? And Jesus gave them one thing to point to. He said, as it was in the day of Noah, so it will be again. We are manipulating the vegetation and we're beginning to manipulate living beings, pigs and animals. I don't know that we've manipulated human beings or their DNA, but it wouldn't surprise me if it came out tomorrow that we've been doing it for the past five years and here's the result. But here's the thing. God created this earth. This earth is cursed. When you begin mixing the things of God with the evilness that's in this earth because of the curse, what are we coming up with? What Does anybody doing? even know where this will lead to? If you think this is kind of far-fetched, well, that's probably why Monty left it for me to tell you, but <laughs> let's look at some people who do take this serious. Let's say that you don't believe anything I've just said and you think it's all baloney, and that's fine. It's not something I would split hairs with anybody over, okay? It's not going to make or break our salvation, okay? But I want to reach lost, and the lost are going to be deceived. And they're going to be deceived into believing that the Messiah is coming from a spaceship in outer space, and he's not. They're never going to look like evil demonic spirits. They're going to look like something beautiful and loving and good, because that's the lie. So, let's see who does take it seriously. Okay, It might surprise you. Our tax dollars, 2013, we've been spending many Amer uh, American PACs. Uh, taxpayers are just concerned their tax, tax dollars are going towards looking for aliens. Would scientists seriously contemplate such an idea as little green men? In fact, this year millions of U.S. tax dollars are being spent on a massive search for just that. Believe it or not, there is an astronomical object called LGM dash one. The letters or the acronym stand for the little green men. Okay? So somebody in budget committees takes this stuff seriously. Scientific America in 2011. The Allen Telescope He's a field array. of radio dishes uh, in rural northern California built to seek out transmissions from distant alien civilization. So in 2011 we had budget crunches and we stopped funding them. They well, contacted our Air Force. They talked them into allowing them to look for space trash for them if they would fund their listening to for aliens. Okay? So we're giving money. Alright, now there's the Mars Space Laboratory. Okay? We have the Kepler spacecraft that's in orbit. Its main goal is to search out Earth-like planets. Okay, let's go on. NBC News. Uh date May 24th 2014 this is a long article that talks about faint alien pulsars sought hunt for extraterrestrial intelligence okay 
data it goes on to talk about data and rocks and water and how they're looking for any of these things that might have be a life giving force and it's a very lengthy article then it goes on the very bottom of the article and it talks about the real meat and potatoes of what these people are doing and it says quote both Shostak and Wormheimer express their optimism that intelligent life exists somewhere in the galaxy and that it should be detectable in the near future as long as SETI continues to receive support, the support it needs between the knowledge that might be obtained from an advanced civilization and the data the idea of mankind's biological into, intellectual place in the universe humans stand to gain a great deal from learning that we are not alone what we're not alone they've never found anything they've never heard a pulse they've never heard a beat they've never heard anything that would tell them there's life out there but we are spending millions and billions to somehow prove there is well when you're spending that kind of money somebody's gonna come up with proof and with as much demonic activity as I believe is going on in the world today it's gonna to be real easy to convince people that these are aliens Congress do they believe it committee chairman Lamar Smith Republican from Texas quote finding other sentient or conscious life in the universe would be the most significant discovery in human history yeah www.space.com that's right scientists are telling Congress that they suspect that there's a an, a habitable planet now all Congress has to do is appropriate the funds to get this party started we'll find alien life scientists tell Congress this life in this lifetime this was by uh, Nola Taylor Reed the UN what about the United Nations well guess what since about 2010 first contact with alien life science news 2010 since when did alien the search for aliens and all of that become this credible science okay I remember when this was science fiction all right I remember when it was crazy to think like that but then we had the introduction of evolution and with evolution anything's possible and so they don't want to believe that God seeded the planet and that God created everything and that God was the moving force but let's totally go for aliens seeded this planet and that's where we are it's the same lie Satan's always been telling me. God didn't do it. It's me. I want the glory that belongs to the Lord. Moving on. Education. What about our education system? Well, wow. search for extraterrestrial life proves to be a worthwhile endeavor. This is the College Reporter, April 20th, 2013. Here's the abstract describing synthetic bio bi biology. The design and construction of new biological parts and systems and the redesign of existing ones for useful purposes uh, has the potential to transform fields from the pharmaceuticals to fuels wow so let's take what's already working and let's try and make it better because we've had great success in everything we put our hands in so far right guys this sounds a lot like the the Kabbalah which is uh, teachings from a secret sect of Jewish people that were perverted long ago and in there they have this um, riddle of how to create a soulless man <laughs> synthetic biology yeah soulless okay. so the underlying to this astrobiology very interesting it's run uh, one of the leading is professors um, in it a Rothschild 
and I don't know how much you know about Bilderbergers, Illuminati, so on and so forth. But I find it interesting that they are sinking all this money, time, and effort into something astrobiology, space biology, space life. No such thing. There's no such thing. There's never been found any space life. But all of a sudden, there's this push and this rage for everyone to be a part of this. Even our educate our universities, some of our biggest universities are offering this stuff to our Kalians. This disturbs me. Moving on. Religion. Very interesting article I read. Mount Graham. Uh, International Observatory is situated in Mount Graham, uh, on Mount Graham in uh, southeast Arizona and is operated by the Vatican Observatory in partnership with uh, the University of Arizona. And they have a new telescope called Large Bio Biocular Telescope Near Infrared Utility with Camera and Integral Field Unit for Extra extra galactic research but that was a mouthful or the acronym Lucifer hmm how interesting something that the Vatican and the church and science is involved in and they named it Lucifer oh there was a reason for it that's right because Lucifer means light bearer and they're looking for life out in space Mm -hmm. uh, Pope Francis, May 13th, 2014, the church would baptize aliens, reads the headline. Okay. And just a little bit of information here. Our education system is not what it used to be. Do not get me wrong. I, do, I have nothing against educators. I have something against the fact that we have allowed the government, the federal government, into our local schools. And they have destroyed them. And now children are being taught to tests. To take these tests, they're just teaching to the test. And it doesn't it cause children to expand on thinking. And because of that, because of the fact that they've taken God out of our schools and they've reduced science like theories to fact evolution one being well there's some information about how our school started okay Harvard Princeton Yale Dartmouth all owe their origins to the gospel Harvard, the college's first president and tutors insisted that there could be no true knowledge or wisdom without Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Yale was started 1701 by the Puritans. Princeton, 1746, this school originally called the College of New Jersey, sprang up as part of, uh, in part from the impact of the Great Awakening. Dartmouth. 1754 strong missionary thrust launched this new school into uh, in New Hampshire its royal charter signed by King George of England specified the school's intent to reach the Indian tribes and to educate uh, and Christianize English youth Columbia first president of uh, New York's Columbia Univers University first known as King's College at one time served as a missionary to America under the English-based Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts. What about science? Let's see, some early of the great pioneers scientists. modern science were men of deep Christian faith. For Co Copernicus, the first astronomer of the scientific revolution, God was personally responsible for all the activities of heaven was his quote. Galileo, 
1642, invented the hydrostatic balance and discovered the laws of dynamics, discovering the four, satellite, four satellites of Jupiter. With the aid of the newly invented telescope, he revolutionized the study of astronomy. He uh, regarded his science as illuminating the works of our creator. Kepler, the one that they named that new space probe looking for aliens. Kepler was a German astronomer, a contemporary of Galileo, who also was a devout Christian, discovering the three laws of planetary motion, laid the foundation for Newton's theory on gravity. And then Newton. This is, to me, the most interesting. Newton, born in the year of Galileo's death, thought he, uh, though he had problems with his Christian views of the Trinity, he was a strong believer. As a member of the Anglican Church, he was involved in the distribution of Bibles to the poor and the construction of new churches. He actually wrote more than a million words on the Bible and theological topics, more than he ever wrote on scientific topics. Wow, interesting. So we have science and an education in general that started off with these great thinkers of the world that moved us bounds and leaps forward because of their great thinking and now it's all we can do to get kids to be able to count change I mean my teenager included I'm not just picking out other people's children it's so very difficult to see thinking outside the box they're taught almost like goose step education it's like um, feed it in regurgitate it in regurgitate what about take it in question it turn it around mull it over see if it has any truth in it challenge it doesn't happen critical thinking is going by the wayside and when you do that then you can introduce anybody's philosophy into our children if they lose the ability to concretely think things through and to um, define for themselves what they believe or, or to understand that you can look at something and question it and question it deeply well once you take that away from children they can believe anything they're a lost generation they're um, they're searching for anything and an alien's just as good as a god you need to wake up people there are people that believe this lie there are people that are funding this lie there are people that are promoting this lie and they know it's a lie some of them don't know they're the biggest fools because they think they're going to have some kind of benefit from ushering in these space people which happen to be demonic spirits and they're going to be hurt they're going to be devastated when they find out it was all a lie and they're going to be really devastated when Yeshua Mashiach comes back and it's too late so we need to help people to understand we have to talk about these things God, it was so hard for me to get on here and just talk about it to y'all because I didn't want anybody to think we were crazy, but I see it happening all around us. Look at the movies that that are the most popular. Space movies, space movies, space movies, aliens, songs, songs about space lovers, everything. It's it they're preparing, they're they're tilling the soil and getting it ready for that seed. And remember. We've already been told great powers and wonders. It's going to be angels, you know. We haven't seen them in a couple thousand years. Not, you know, the kind that make us fall to our feet as dead. But well, what happens if all of a sudden they show up? People are going to believe there's something wrong. We have to know the truth. We have to be prepared for the truth so that we're not devastated and our faith isn't shaken. So that we're not sitting there going, Oh my gosh, all this time it was aliens and I thought it was God. But no, we have to know the truth. It says the deception is going to be so great that if it were possible, 
even be a leap would be to see. So it's going to be a pretty good ride. I pray this sparks something in you to research, to look for yourself. 